Hello and welcome back to the Broken Doll and I'm just getting my camera set here. Now, today we're going to talk about this doll here. This doll here, when I got her from the, um, the thrift store, my first thoughts right away when I found her was that she looked like the Kathy doll. She's not marked like the Kathy doll. The Kathy doll was made by Madame Alexander. She was a doll that was brought out in the 19, I, I think the late 1950s, early 60s. She was a heavy doll. She's built the same way as the little Ricky doll from American Character. Um, this doll is a little bit lighter, but still a heavy doll. Well made, well constructed. Now, this doll could be a Canadian doll. Why do I say that? Well, like I was talking about on previous videos, companies, when they made a doll, they would make the doll for, let's say, we'll, we'll use the Cappy doll as an example. Madame Alexander made the Cappy doll. Then what happens is, is that... They either set up their own competition or they sell out the mold. Now, this not, that's not unheard of. Either one of those are correct. It's nothing for a company to silently have another company compete against them. And what they do is, why would they make a company to compete against? Well, they offer the doll with a different name at a lesser price and maybe a little bit lower quality. But affordable to a parent who cannot afford maybe a Madame Alexander doll. But yet, Madame Alexander company makes money. It's not unheard of. I'm not saying Madame Alexander did that. I'm just using her as an example. But there were companies that did that. Now, this, as soon as, like I said, as soon as I seen this doll, I went, I went Kathy doll. Well, then the other scenario could be is that once they were done making the Kathy doll, they sold the mold and to another company. And it was nothing for other countries to buy those molds, like my country, Canada. Um, Canada made their own dolls as well, but as well they bought molds from United States, Germany, even the United States bought molds from other countries as well to make their dolls. They bought a lot from France, Germany, you know, that type of thing as well. So the toy world back then was really a lot of making and borrowing type of thing. So now we have this doll that's before you. And it, it probably came out around a little after Kathy. Very, very shortly after her, though. Because why countries wanted to make, get a little piece of the pie. It's, we'll take Madame Alexander again as an example. When the Dion quintuplets were born in Ontario, northern Ontario, Madame Alexander, American company, came in and made the dolls for, the, uh, uh, for Canada for the Dion quintuplets. Again, the United States wanted a piece of that pie. Why? Because Ontario was making a lot of money off those dolls. Though it was a tragic thing that happened to them, and I don't agree with what happened to them, and they were able to to get some of their money back as, as they grew and became adults, they fought for themselves. They never did acquire the whole amount. But it's the fact that they fought, and they won. And um, sometimes it's not the fact of um, getting all the money back, but letting people know that this was done wrong. And that's the greater message in it all, that they were taken advantage of. And I'm not saying Madame Alexander did that. It, that's not my, my point. Or the, the province of Ontario did, for sure. But everybody wanted a piece of that pie all the same. Japan made Dion quintuplets. Uh, there were other places that made little quint dolls. I had a set, back when I was a little girl, of little quint dolls. It was not unheard of to buy a package of five dolls at the, at the, the dime store. You could buy them because why they were still pressing that to make money. Even little uh, China did. A lot of a lot of places did. A lot of countries did. So it's it's not just pointing up one country over the other. It was like a handful all the way around that we did the, this stuff. This is the toy world we're in, and it happens not just in toys but in other manufactured goods as well. There are the greater. There's the big names and then the lesser. You know, you could buy whatever. You know, my brothers would wear Wranglers instead of Levi's. And they would be made fun of because you had to have the Levi tag on the back of your pants. Back in the 70s, that tag on the back of your pants that said Levi's, you better have it because why? It was a fad. But my brothers wore Wranglers. They were not as hip, you know, not as cool because they wore what? Wranglers. It goes in everything in life. But anyhow, it even hit the doll world. So now that we understand these little offshoot dolls, like, like this one, for instance, right here. Let's look at the Kathy doll. And, let, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of similarities. So here's the Kathy doll. I'll put her up beside. But there's differences as well. 
let's talk about her differences. This is Kathy. And she's been she's been played with. Her lips are worn out. She doesn't sit as well. I'm just gonna put something underneath her. Whoops, I'll just sit that underneath here. Maybe that'll help her. There we go. All right, can you see her? Yeah, you can. Now, let's take a look at her. All right? Now, we got the, them there. And let's get her head so that it's they're both together. There we go. Now you're looking at them both. I hope you can see why I thought she was a Kathy doll when I pulled her out. But the materials right away told me that she was not. Then the markings. Kathy has a real squishy head. This one doesn't. It's squishy, but not like this. The arms, different material. I can squish her arms. I can't squish these, but they're the same material as this. Her body's the same, but she has a squishy belly. Um, her legs are squishy. These are not. So the material right away, different. Kathy's heavy, really heavy. She cost a, a little bit to send her to me. This doll's heavy, but not as heavy. But still a well-made doll. Okay, it very well constructed. They both are actually. They're very both well constructed dolls. Stood the test of time. Okay, but let's look at now some of the similarities now. The hair molds are the same. Little bump here. Let's get you right in so you can see this. Because from a distance you can't see all this. We're going to come zoom and get right up on top of this hair mold. And we're going to go to the tops of their heads here. Now you see the little wisp of hair. We've got the same, I'm going to have to bring her up because she's got blonder hair. There's that little wisp right there. And Kathy has it right here. Okay? Let's take a look. another look. Little bump right here on the head of hair. See that little lift right there? Okay? Kathy has it also right here. So they have the same hair mold, which tells me that these are the same dolls, same molds, but they changed it a bit. Her face is wider. Kathy's face is a little wider than this doll in some regards here. Okay? So there is, because of the vinyl difference, um, that is what led this doll to have a, maybe a little bit more narrow face, where the vinyl here is a little bit more relaxed and gave her a little bit of a wider face. All right, so there are differences, likenesses, but they are of the same mold, okay? Just some slight material differences that constructed the doll a little differently. But the hair molds are the same. If we were to look at another part of the, of the hair mold, wisp of hair right here. Look at the wisp of hair down here. Look at all this up here. Let's take a look here. Here's the same wisp of hair. Whoops, she's going over. Right here, right in here. It's they have the same hair mold, which tells me she has the they both have oh let's take another look. Here's the top knot, the little bump on the top of the head here, and the little wisp. And she has it as well. The top knot right there, little bump, and then the wisp going around. So we have the same hair molds, we have the same pretty close to the same doll, but the materials made the doll di look different. And that's what we're looking at here. So why I thought she was a Kathy doll, there you go. The likenesses are there. Except now the Kathy doll here is Mark Madame Alexander. This one here, she has markings on her back of her bum, right here, that says 20F-5. That's what her markings are. So that's the differences between them. You know, it's the markings, the, the type of material. Um, constructed these dolls differently, but they're the same doll, the same mold. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Um, I don't know if they're the same length. Let's, let's measure them. If, I, I got a feeling this one might be a little shorter. So let's take Kathy's length. She is 20 inches. Okay, that's Kathy. And now let's do this one here. To me, this is not quite a 20 inch doll. I might be wrong though. Nope, she's about an 18 inch doll. She's 18 inches. So they knocked two inches off of her in her, in her and they probably took it into the, um, how did they shorten her up by two inches? Through the body or leg length. That's what they did. And maybe the head is a little shorter. 
So why did they do that to the molds? Well, they can't make a Kathy doll complete. It belongs to Madame Alexander. So Madame Alexander probably said, here's a mold like Kathy, but you know, you gotta change it or we gotta change it before we sell it. So they gave them shorter leg length and they gave them maybe body length different. There you go. Or the material, the material itself, because it's a tighter material, shrink the doll up a little bit too. That could be it. They made the dolls look close enough, but not exact. And um, that's why you can get tripped up very easily saying, I got a Kathy doll when you don't. So you want to make sure you're looking for those, those clues on your doll. If you're going to buy these dolls, that you're not getting a knockoff. Knockoffs mean they're coming really close to what you own. So now let's take one more look at another doll that comes very close, but there are differences. This is American character here, and this is little Ricky. Now, again, little Ricky was made from the same material as Kathy was. Squishy head, squishy arms, squishy legs, okay? Same material, same height, but American Character gave him a different hair curls, hair carvings. All the molded hair is all molded differently. So you can tell that he is different, a lot, lot different than these two here. But they're the same, they're 20 inches, same material, same everything, but he's marked American character on the back. And that's where you get those differences. You can have same material. So you can see companies were even sharing the same type of material back then. These are 50 dolls, 60 dolls, getting a little cheaper with material. And so I, I bring that before you now. If people want to add to it, want to tell me I said something wrong, I could have. A lot of this is just what I've learned over time. I'm not always accurately right. I can be wrong, so I, I, I accept that. But I think I'm not too far off with what I'm saying to you. And um, we can always um, make the information better as we move along, add and make it be better. But I'm giving you a start to what a lot of companies, what I've read about a lot of companies and what they've done. I've done a lot of reading on companies and the stuff that they were into and what they were doing at the time. And... Yeah, you know, I even saw with the Chrissy dolls, there were knockoff Chrissy dolls. Uh, Mexico made one, uh, a knockoff Chrissy doll. You can tell right away um, the material was, was cheaper, a little bit cheaper, but the doll was very well constructed and did the job. The hair grew out of the doll's head and they're still around and some of them were in, are still in very, very good shape today. I've been trying to get my hands on one just to have as a comparison to the, the real Chrissy doll. So um, we even know with Barbies, there's knockoff Barbies and everything. Materials always a little bit on the cheaper side, but they still stand true to time and they were played with just as well. Um, I have Dollykins, which was in there with, um, and my Dollykins was not the 1950 Dollykins. I'm talking the 1960 11 and a half inch Dollykins that came out to compete with Barbie. So there you go. Always something somewhere trying to up and down companies and steal what? The attention of the buyer. And that's what it's about. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and, um, you know, I hope it enlightens some of you there and, you know, some food for thought about dolls and what you're looking for. And these three little gaffers here, just um, how you see the, the differences and the likenesses and the differences in materials, how materials even aged and um, absorbed uh, cigarette and gas fumes in the house. Um, nicotine, and this didn't smell like nicotine. Um, a lot of a lot of times the gas would yellow things in, the, in a home. And... Um, that was just at, of the times and materials absorbed it. So anyways, I leave this with you and I hope you enjoyed this video and um, more to come. Um, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.